Why doesn't God just kill the devil? Since God is all-powerful, almighty, why doesn't God just get rid of him once and for all? Why doesn't the almighty God just wipe out Satan? Just end it once and for all. So, death of Satan. Why doesn't God just wipe him out? One thing for sure. We are in a real war against the devil, and only Jesus Christ can give us the victory. Not many people in our world have the kind of faith in God that was voiced by one of the Jews in the Warsaw Ghetto during World War II, who said, quote, when he was asked why he still believed in God in spite of what was happening to his people, quote, I believe in the sun even when it is not shining. I believe in God even when he is silent. Well said. But when we turn to the Bible, it helps us to understand why God allows suffering, and most of all, how suffering at last will come to an end. Hallelujah. We're going to look at five quick biblical facts about God's relationship to evil in this world. Here we go. Fact number one, God isn't the source of evil. I always get upset when I read the fine print of insurance policies, many of which say that they don't cover, quote, acts of God. That usually refers to natural other terrible disasters that the insurance company won't cover. I frankly think the devil loves statements like that because they blame God for so many of the terrible things that happen in our world. Not good. But the Bible is clear about who started the problem of evil. It was an angel by the name of Lucifer who decided he wanted to become God himself. We read about him in the 14th chapter of the book of Isaiah, quote, For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation on the farthest sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High, Isaiah 14, 12 to 14. We read about this same heavenly being, this angel who became a demon in the 28th chapter of Ezekiel, but he was created perfect. We see that in this verse exactly how and where sin got started. God said regarding Lucifer, quote, you were perfect in your ways from the day you were created till iniquity was found in you, Ezekiel 28, 15. So when Lucifer committed this first of all sins in God's universe, he became Satan, the great adversary of God and humanity. And because of this, he was cast out of heaven. Jesus spoke of this event when he declared, I saw Satan like lightning fall from heaven, Luke 10, 18. Now the book of Revelation describes this event in greater detail. Here it is. So the great dragon was cast out, that serpent of old called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. And that's why you have to watch my videos, and you'll see links up on the screen here, about big lies, 10 big lies of the devil. And another one, how the devil mixes good and evil. All right, so he was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Revelation 12, verse 9. So, also watch my video about 10 ways the devil tries to shake your faith in the end time. All right, so fact number two. People often bring suffering on themselves. Sad, but you know it's true. We've all heard the, the saying, the devil made me do it. Actually, the devil doesn't have the power to make us do anything unless we yield to his control. The Bible tells us that sin is something we choose, not something anyone forces on us unless we tempt the devil to tempt us, unless we yield to uh, the control and the dominion of the evil one. Now, the Bible says that the serpent of old, which is the book in the book of Revelation, tells us is a symbol of Satan. So, and that he was the instrument by which our first parents, Adam and Eve, were deceived in the beginning, Genesis 3. 1 to 6 and Revelation 12 9 and Revelation 20 verse 2. This was the source of the entire sin problem everybody on this earth. 
all the tragedy, all the pain you and I go through, all the disaster, all the scandal that we see in the world, it comes from the enemy and us giving him the advantage, giving him uh, the uh, stack of cards in his favor. So the book of Romans says that through one man, Adam, sin entered the world and death through sin and thus death spread to all men because all sin, Romans 5 verse 12. Every human being, in other words, has followed Adam's example in sin. They don't have to, but that's what they've chosen. And so the curse of sin has spread to the entire world. This is the curse we have brought upon ourselves and it's why we need a savior. Thank God we have a savior. Fact number three, sometimes God uses suffering to test, develop, and reveal character. Now the story of Job is one of the strongest examples of this in all the Bible. The book of Job tells us that this man was blameless and upright and one who feared God and shunned evil. Job 1 verse 1. The Bible goes on to say how Satan asked the Lord for permission to test Job and this permission was granted and you can read that in Job 1 6 to 12. Now the devil went on to destroy Job everything Job had, all his possessions, and even his children, verses 13 to 19. But through all of this, the Bible tells us, quote, Job did not sin nor charge God with wrong, verse 22. Job's character was tested and tried, and eventually, the Bible says God turned his captivity and gave him twice as much as he had before. God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him, according to Hebrews 11, verse 6. And of course, the reward is that God gives us his presence and his, pre, uh, his uh, peace and his power. But then God will ultimately do for all of us what he did for Job. But maybe not always in this life will we end up with so much more, but in the life to come. But often, if we're faithful, God will even reward us in this life. God turned his captivity, gave him twice as much as he had before. Job 42 verse 10. So perhaps God is permitting you to be tested right now, just like Job was tested. You and I can claim the power of God. I believe this with all my heart, everybody, that we can claim the power of God that Job claimed and endure the fierce trials that we go through without sinning willfully, deliberately, and with rebellion against our Savior. Fact number four, God is permitting evil to come to a full flower so the universe will recognize his justice when evil is at last destroyed. Soon, there will be no more suffering because of famine and pestilences, earthquakes and tornadoes and so forth. Now, many of us remember the story Jesus told about the wheat farmer who found that someone had come to his fields at night and sowed tares or weeds on his property, Matthew 13, 25 to 28. Jesus said the enemy of this parable talks about is the devil, verse 39. And the farmer's employees wanted to pull up the weeds, verse 28. But the farmer said, no, lest while you gather up the tares, weeds, you also uproot the wheat with them, verse 29. And Jesus explains that the harvest here spoken of is the end of the world, verse 39, when God will destroy the wicked and save the righteous, verses 41 to 43. But notice that this doesn't happen till both wheat and tares are fully ripe. <clears throat> then they can be distinguished one from the other, not till then. Till the world and all of God's universe can see the difference, will God destroy the wicked? Fact number five, <clears throat> the Bible assures us that evil will finally be destroyed. You know, the farmer in that parable said to the workers, let both grow together until the harvest. And at the time of the harvest, I will say to the reapers, First gather together the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. Verse 30. When Jesus comes back to this earth, 
and the final destruction of the wicked has taken place. Revelation 20 verse 10. <clears throat> the Bible tells us that God will make a new earth. One without suffering, without evil, without pain. The book of Revelation tells us, quote, God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. Then he who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. Praise the Lord. Revelation 21 and verses 4 and 5. I want to ask you, look here, everybody. <clears throat> I want to ask you a question. Are you getting ready for the earth made new? Very soon, evil will finally be wiped out. But God must permit it to come to full flower before he does this. He can't just use his awesome power to destroy evil right now. It's like what President Kennedy in the missile, during the Cuban Missile Crisis of 1962 said, quote, our goal is not the victory of might, but the vindication of right. And so in the great controversy between good and evil, listen, that is God's ultimate and eternal purpose to put an end to sin and suffering once and for all. When we see it fulfilled, we will know how right, how good, how just, and how merciful our God truly is.